What's happening, my friends? Normally, I bring you a Resolve tutorial where I show how to do something fancy. Today, we're getting simple. The ZV-1 that's recording this is on a tripod. Most of us don't have a tripod out in the field. We do a lot of handheld stuff, right? So I'm gonna take DaVinci Resolve and I'm gonna take you through it and we're going to stabilize the footage and I'm gonna explain how the stabilizer works in the edit page. You can do it in the color page, you can do it in the fusion page. Today, we are just talking about the edit page because honestly, that's where I do like 95% of my stabilization. There are certain circumstances where you might need the uh, fusion page or the color tab, whatever, tab page. What's the proper terminology? Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you call the different areas of DaVinci Resolve. So with that, let's get started. So jumping into Resolve, I've got two clips here and then the uncut second clip. We're also going to be comparing a little bit of kind of in-camera stabilization versus Resolve. I've got my window nice and wide here so we can show things as they happen. You can see in this big window over here just kind of what's going on in the frame. We're gonna take a look at how much the cropping is and some jitters and stuff like that. But our first clip, I filmed on my Sony ZV-1 with the active stabilization off. I think they call it steady shot and it was set to off because I had a talking head to record and the next day I went out for a ride and I tried to use it. So I forgot, my bad. But hey, who knew I was gonna use this footage in this manner? I mean, that's just hilarious, right? <laughs> You, you find that hilarious? I found it kind of hilarious. Anyway, back in Resolve, we're on the first clip and in our inspector, if you don't see it, click over here on inspector and it'll pop up, you know, oh, it's hidden. There it is. Hey, look at that. It's magic. And I have collapsed all these. So if you just click on transform in the blank space here, or even in the word, anywhere between the red dot and the keyframe dot, you can expand and contract these. So. To focus on this one, I have stabilization open. If it's not open, just click here. And we have the stabilize button, which will apply the stabilization, a mode which we're gonna go through, camera lock, zoom, cropping ratio, smooth, and strength. There, video over, it's done, it, it's that easy. Just click the button and it works, which may actually be the truth in some circumstances. It's probably not gonna be the truth for 90% of what you stabilize. Anyway. We're gonna start with the three modes, perspective, similarity, and translation. So the way to explain these is perspective looks at jitters. So the shakes, like if you drink too much coffee like me and you're on the end of a selfie stick, I've got a selfie stick here, you know, and I've got my ZV-1 on it, it shakes a little bit. Ooh, there, it's in focus, it shakes. That's perspective. Similarity is going to look at the pan, tilt, and rotation of the camera footage and try to fix it. And then the last one is translation, and that is literally pan and tilt, no rotation. There's a specific need for all three of these. Trust me, I have spent the last year, give or take, um, trying out different things with the Sony, using it in the field, and then coming home and going, my God, this footage just absolutely doesn't look good. It To me, it's unusable. You probably haven't noticed because I've done a few tricks. We're gonna show here in a minute. Camera lock is going to act like you're on a tripod. So if you select that, it'll try to make it look like your footage was shot on a tripod. Doesn't always work. I tried it a little bit ago on this footage. It didn't seem to make a difference and I was pretty unhappy with it. Zoom, I'm gonna show in just a minute, but it actually zooms to hide any uh, any movement outside of the frame. So what the stabilization is gonna do is it's going to apply yaw pitch and roll. So it's gonna change the pitch this way and the yaw that way and the roll this way. I may be wrong, but those are the three actions that it's going to take on your footage, which really leads to some wonky things. But if you check zoom, it's gonna zoom in until any edges aren't visible. And again, I'll show that in a minute too. The cropping ratio is how much will it crop into your footage? And that is a slider that you're gonna wanna play with. We're gonna double click on cropping ratio to reset it. Smooth is how smooth it's gonna try to make it. And strength is how much of this effect it's going to apply to your footage. 
I recommend leaving smooth on 0 0.250 at all times and strength at 1.0. You can play with it at your own risk. If you play with this and it screws it up, just go in and hit this reset button. Boop, there it is. So now we're gonna play through this first clip real quick before we stabilize it. And you can see just how jittery it is because again, the stabilization was turned off in the camera. So it's real jittery. I mean, it's at the length of my arm plus another foot and a half or so for the uh, selfie stick that I had it on. So we're gonna bring our selection onto it to make sure that we're actually applying stabilization to this clip. Make sure we're reset to stock default settings. We're gonna hit stabilize. And it takes about 10 seconds or five seconds and it's done. I didn't actually speed that up. That's pretty cool. So now you can see it's cropped in way far. So this red icon right here, the red dot, if you click it, it turns the effect off. And you can see it's cropping in quite a bit because there's a lot of camera movement. The less amount of camera movement you have, the less cropping there's going to be. It's just a fact of life. Anyway, back into Resolve. Now, if we play through, you can see that it's very smooth. I look pretty good, but it's cropped in way too much to be useful. You can barely see the camera at the edge. Now, if I go to this marker and I turn stabilization off, boom, you could actually see what I'm talking about. But with the stabilization on, you can't see all of me. You can't see the camera real well. So that's not good. So just for side-by-side -side comparison, I've duplicated the clip here and we've got three copies. We've got similarity, perspective, and translation. You can see it changing over here. And the first one is similarity. And if we look at perspective, it's cropped in a little bit more. And then translation is a little bit less. So if I move these around. You can see that perspective is zoomed in that much. Perspective is a little bit less and translation is a little bit less than that. Translation is gonna give you the least amount of crop and maybe the least amount of stabilization, but it's a balancing act of which is better. Do you want the cropping and pure stabilization or do you need to show something in frame? If you're far enough away from your subject, it's probably a non-issue, but like me with a foot and a half selfie stick and a CV-1 that's got, you know, the 24 mil lens on it, it ain't great. It's already too close. So, yeah. Uh, and remind you, this is the unstabilized footage. We're gonna take a look at another clip in just a second. But playing through, you can see that perspective is very smooth. We showed that earlier. So we'll take a look at the similarity and you can see that it does some wonky things you can still see some jitters in the background and my bike wobbles a lot. That's the other thing. The way this stuff works, you're gonna get a lot of wobble if you're doing too much. And we're gonna counteract that in just a second. So given that translation was the best here, we'll get rid of the other one and we'll show this. This is your translation. You can still see there's a little bit of micro jitters, but it's kind of wobbly in the background. Now it's time to fix that. So the one thing that I like to change is this cropping ratio. And I typically start from 0.950. So right there, and I'll hit stabilize. And again, we're on translation. So we'll come down, we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison here on similarity, and then showing the translation. That one still shows some jitters and some wobbliness in the background. So we'll get rid of that one. Maybe it's similarity that we need this time. Yeah, see, that's much better. See how, see how my bike isn't jiggly? We'll go back a second. See, it's not real jiggly. If I change this, since we didn't like that at all, and we'll do perspective, we'll try that out for a second. And a lot of this comes down to trial and error. Look at the clip, have Resolve analyze the clip, see what works, see what didn't work, and then change one or two settings at a time and hit it again. I'm just here to explain the differences between them and show them to you, but it really is going to take your eye looking at your footage to see what you want best. But now that the perspective is done analyzing, we're gonna take a look at that. And I don't like what it's doing there because it's kind of zooming in and out. It's not bad and it's got more wobble than similarity did. So similarity is the winner for this one. And because I promised it, we're going to reset the stabilization and then we're gonna turn off zoom. We're gonna hit stabilize 
And this is just a demonstration of the zoom. And after I disabled the underneath layer there, we're gonna hit play and you're gonna see what zoom does. See the black bars? This is fit in here. So if I zoom out a little bit, you can really see it, watch that. See how much it's moving around in the frame? And if I go one step further and I add a solid color and we change the color to green, you will really see it, watch this. Look how much that's moving around. And the zoom automatically figures out just how much you need to counteract all this yaw pitch and roll that it's added to your footage. Look at that, wow. That's crazy, right? So let's skip over that to a clip that has in-camera stabilization and take a look at what stabilization does for us in Resolve. Because I think you're really gonna like that because with minimal effort, we're gonna get 90% of the stabilization with far less cropping and all the other stuff that we've seen in the previous clip, which should be you know, kind of expected. And we're gonna again reset stabilization and we're gonna start with all the default settings. We're gonna hit stabilize. Again, it's a fairly short clip. Longer ones will obviously take a lot longer. Whoa, that's a lot of crop. Yeah, that, that's about a 20% crop, 15%. But if we turn stabilization off, here's what this clip looks like. You can see far less jitters, far less movement. The Sony is doing its best job to kind of crop in and fix some of that like jello look to it, right? That the other footage had. Now, if we re-enable stabilization, again, clicking our red icon. Now you look at that, oh, that's buttery smooth. That looks real good, doesn't it? Oh, that is nice. But again, oop, see, we got some weird stuff right there. Right there, we got some weird stuff. Let's play that back. See that? That's that's wonky, we don't like that. Let's try translation real quick, because that's kind of my go-to. It works in most scenarios, especially when combined with the in-camera stabilization. And you can already tell that the crop is five, 6%, something like that, 10% maybe. And look, that still looks really smooth, but it's not taking out that rotation so when I drop down to look at the camera, it should be a lot better. Boom, and we're done. We're done, that's it, Can't video over, right? Ah, but I can keep a lot of that data that it cropped out if we change that one setting again. So we're gonna go over to our cropping ratio, change it to 0 0.950, hit stabilize again. It's fairly quick this time because it already knows what's going on. It has already analyzed the footage. But now it's got all the micro jitters gone and then when I drop down to look at the camera, it should look really good. See that? Boom, done. And then if you look at the, the crop, the crop's not bad. And if I duplicate this clip, reset our stabilization, try translation again, and hit stabilize, we'll show the difference between the 0.50 and the 0.950 cropping. There's the 5.0, there's the 9.50, 5.0, 950. It's not a huge difference, but if your hand is just on the edge of the frame, it's not off the frame. It's still in frame. So that can make a huge difference. You know what I mean? Now, just for comparison's sake, I have already stabilized with the default settings the long version of this clip. Now, mind you, Resolve will take the entire length of the clip into consideration and all the movement in that clip. And in this clip, that I'm pointing to like you can see it, I spin around a couple of times. So there's a lot of movement and you'll see just how far it crops in. Back in Resolve, here's our clip. Here it is stabilized. Whoa, that's a big crop. That's like 30% easily. I mean, granted, it's gonna be rock solid, right? It's gonna be awesome. And if I jump ahead, yeah, you can see it's doing some major, major stuff. But look at what you're missing. You're missing literally everything I'm trying to show you right there. So just for grins, let's apply our favorite new setting, translation with 0 0.950, and see what that gives us back. Look at that. It's barely any crop at all, but here we are. We're gonna spin around right about here. There's still quite a bit of movement, but it's smooth movement. There's no micro jitters, it's just, straight up solid movement. 
That looks pretty good. For grins, we will stabilize with similarity, which again does the pan tilt and rotation. And you can see it cropped in a slight bit more. Oh, see, right there, right there. This is something I'm talking about. Watch that. See that? We'll do it again. You can watch it jump. It's just, it's, it's doing like a pulsation thing. I don't like that. That's why I don't typically use similarity. I use translation instead, and I just try to keep the camera level. I mean, anybody can keep the camera level, right? Right? No? Hey, are you enjoying this video? Hit the like button for me. So hopefully you've learned that by adjusting this cropping ratio, you can have a big effect or a small effect on your footage, which can have a big effect on your happiness with the footage and make something that was previously unusable, usable, right? So hopefully you learned something. If you did, leave me a comment below. And if you have a question about DaVinci Resolve, also leave me a comment below. I'm happy to do more of these tutorials and help out more people trying to get better at Resolve. Because if you're better at your editing, doesn't that make you feel good? Do you even edit your own videos? Leave a comment below. And until next time, go check out this video that YouTube thinks you should watch. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.